you guys and my family, how's every single one of you? Welcome to another episode of our show. We're going to be talking about every single thing that happened in this Wednesday night. And jump Paul, more building, more build, more for what is going to be AEW Revolution, March 6th. You know, this pay-per-view is getting more matches. It's going to get all packed. It's going to be a really, really good show. The card is loaded. And some matches that we already predicted are just being official. What are your thoughts about this AEW Dynamite? Yeah, you know, that some of the stuff that they're booking, they always load the pay-per-view. And I will say, you know, tonight's Dynamite, I thought was a pretty good show. The pay-per-view looks to be pretty good. But, you know, the one thing AW always has in common, don't matter, regular show, pay-per-view, whatever. Even though it might be great, there's always a few stinkers, a few, you know, little wet parts here and there. And, and, mm -hmm, yes. couple, and, there, was, and there was a couple on this show tonight we're going to talk about. So. Exactly. So thank you so very much to every single one of you for being here. And don't forget, family, we have so much content. We have also, like, with its uh, No Surrender for Impact, it was a great pay-per-view. Don't forget to check it out. Jump Paul, myself, talking about all of that that is happening in the Forbidden Door. You know, Jay White retrain, you know, all the Bullet Club. He promised that he's going to be, you know, on Impact. He's going to be on AEW. They still have that connection is not really told that they are but like you know they can be more shows so that's great but you know the show started out with like a multi-man you know battle casino battle royale to determine like kind of number one contenders like the first team that is going to go against the jurassic express at the revolution so this for me i don't like because it's just you know a lot of people just to be featured right there four or five seconds in the ring then you get kicked out i don't know how you yeah, felt that... about it because in the end the people that are involved in the storyline ended up being the winners yeah, and the one thing, uh, just they're going to have another one of these next week. And, you know, one of the losers, which we'll talk about in a little bit, they said, oh, well, we're going to be in the one next week. I don't like that. There shouldn't be double opportunities. You know, we didn't see every tag team here. We didn't see the House of Black. We didn't see the Acclaimed, you know, just to name a few. We didn't see some tag teams. So they should have split it. You shouldn't get, you know, you should be able to double dip. It should be you're in one battle royal or you're in the other. And that's it. You only get one shot. But no, I mean, I, I, you know, once they trimmed the fad of a lot of the losers and the job teams in this, the one, some things to make note is Santana is so over. I almost wish he would have won this thing. The Young Bucks, they took out Ortiz early on and Santana was in there for a while. But him and Trent had a bunch of back and forth going back to the... the see, that, see, that's why like, Santana's like, yeah, thank you, Sam yeah. <laughs> going, going back to the street fight, you know, him and Trent had a bunch of back and forth. They got eliminated, I believe, by O'Reilly. They were, like, yes. you know, suplexing each other on the apron or trying to, whatever. O'Reilly eliminated them both. Then at the end of this thing, um, uh, Bobby Fish, he pulls out uh, Dax. So Dax gets eliminated. So there's FTR. Doesn't and it bother you that FTR, you know, has to like just be chopped out as any other one of the tag teams? Yeah. Well, we already know the story. The Young Bucks are going to win the one next week because at the end of this thing, it's John Silver, O'Reilly, and... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Matt Jack. It's Matt, Matt Jackson. Jackson. They're yes. in there. You know, Matt Jackson flipped over John Silver. He's right there. Kyle O'Reilly quick comes in, flips him over as well. The Red Dragons, they win this thing. I mean, the right team to win it, but we, it, it, they painted the picture so obvious that, you know, it, the right thing to do would be not put the Young Bucks in. But, you know, we know that the way that the story's going, that's exactly what they're going to do. Or, so. like, we can say, Jean Paul, you know why Cody Rhodes slave AEW? Maybe. <laughs> we don't want to, like, throw yeah, more speed. Speaking of that, for anybody that wants to say, oh, it's going to, it's still a work or, oh, whatever. No, if you notice, they took him out of the opening. The intro yes. that they do, you know, with their song, yeah. he's not in it anymore. So. Exactly. So, like, I mean, like, like you said, in the end, you know, Kyle O'Reilly is the one that is winning. So, Red Dragon is going to be the first ones added to this uh, triple threat of the tag team match for the titles. And, you know, at the end we got to see also alan hammond page coming out and he's attacking kyle o'reilly and bobby fish but he did not attack the young bucks see that's something that to like notice and they're like oh no no dude you know oh you want to like big their answers you want to attack them that's fine then we'll see what happens later and then adam cole came out also but like of course o'reilly had to like get like the or like the big clothesline right there the yeah, box yeah. and then you know you saw like a big a good promo from uh, adam hammond page talking about uh, since 2008 adam cole has been winning titles he's been winning everything every promotion every company that he's been going through and i mean good go back and forth between the two i, I like the build up but i don't know if it's going to be a title switch but at least this is, is starting to feel a little more, you know, serious here. At least it feels more about the time. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the it's hard to say because we, we say, like, Hangman is so good. And he's one of those guys who he proves it where we say the baby face is all about the chase. 
and once he gets it, he kind of falls flat. I mean, Red Dragon, I didn't think that they were going to win this. I thought Matt Jackson was going to be the one whose hand was held at the end of this thing. So I popped for that. And immediately Hangman comes out. He They, they get no, you know, he, he just destroys all their momentum, buries them. But I'm like, he's the world champ. So whatever, I forgive it. He has the feud with Adam Cole. But then, I mean, this promo, it really, it, it was all right. But it really didn't do anything for me. You know what I mean? It's just... Well, Adam Cole and him, you know, they should have been fighting each other. He should have jumped Red Dragon, Adam Cole, fuck you, boom, 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 back and forth, whatever, pull apart. You know, maybe the Bucks, like they said, uh, and then they have the promo later on. Oh, Bucks, why didn't you help us? You know, I, the, the whole promo, I don't know. Hangman, it feels like he should almost be the TNT champion. <laughs> like yeah, I mean, uh, like, to be to be like the World Heavyweight Champion, you know, AW, like the main guy, mm, no, no, he's, he's, falling, he's falling flat. Yes, I don't think nobody really believes that, like, he's not in the same league as Omega. Moxley, uh, Jericho, all of them. I don't know. I don't know what they can do, but like, he does not feel like in that same league. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I don't even want to say it's him. I mean, it's the booking. He's not him and Adam Cole aren't booking this feud. You know, it's Tony Khan and everybody else. Well, it's Tony Khan, but. And know, I'll tell I, you, I, like, the, 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 the big, but the big issue is like, you know, when you have so many people, it's really hard to book. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're McMahon. I don't care if you're Tony Khan. I don't care if you're Scott Demore. I don't care if like, you're not Courtney. It's just so hard because you gotta please everybody or at least make them feel somewhat like, oh, we're, we're taking yeah, care of you, you know? That. That's why a lot of these contracts, you know, hopefully Tony Khan just lets a lot of them expire. Besides the big names, like he rolled over the Bucks, Omega, all them, you know. But like a lot of these, you know, guys should just let them go. Exactly, and you know, and I think, I think, you know, what, what they need to really do, like you said, like, like more Cody's. You know, they need to jump ship, they need to go to other places so it also refreshes. Because every single time that like, we have a brand new star coming, it's just a former WWE guy. I, it, yep. does, it doesn't feel good anymore. It's just like, you know, it's like, this is the place where we yeah, come, and, and we'll, where and we we'll get, get fired. And we'll get into former WWE guys, you know, later on. Exactly, but you know, let's say just touch upon like this situation because there's still tension. There's still, you know, causing like here, like oh, Adam Cole doesn't even know. Look at the expression on his face, right? They're calling like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I'm trying to get these four guys to get along, and we all have a super mega group. It's not working because oh, like oh, we're gonna win next week, and we're gonna all be added into the tag match. I don't know about that. So we'll see. I mean, this can play a factor into the title match, and that's how Anna Hanna and Page can still be be the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. So we'll see what happens on that poll. But tell me a little bit about uh, Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. However, like he's just cutting the promo because in the main event he's gonna go against Garcia, and he just says that like if he will be mentored by him or by Motley, he will be already like a mega superstar because he has the ability, he has everything. He sees himself when he was younger in Garcia. So we'll see. I mean. And this is like well, something good for the show because at the end we got a really nice closing of it. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, Danielson, you know, he, to me, he's so good. And I knew this match was going to be good. And spoiler, I did enjoy it. But, you know, the, the one thing, like you said, is it really the main event? You know, why couldn't the Battle Royal be the main event? And why couldn't the, the last thing you see is Hangman Adam Page? Right? Why wasn't the last? You know, it's almost like Moxley and Daniel Bryan are the main event guys and Hangman is it? Isn't that kind of how this feels? Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you. A, a, a thousand percent. So we'll see what happens, you know. But at least in the main event, is going to actually be added something really good in that match. We're going to have something great at Revolution. And, you know, we're going to just talk about MJF because he cut a really good promo. Pretty much saying that, you know, CM Punk has been his idol for the whole time. And you said, like, uh, that is something that is actually good or worth mentioning. He kind of be, became babyface. So I was like, what the hell is going on here? You know, oh, you've been my idol, I love you, oh, I've been following you, I used to practice promos in front of a mirror just to sound exactly like you, because I wanted to be like you, Phil. Oh, it hurt me that in January 14, you know, you left me and you left the pro wrestling world. So what, what are your thoughts? I mean, to me, it's, it's clearly mind games. He's just trying to play this kind of stuff to get CM Punk out of focus, to just take yeah. away the fact that they're going to use the color, you know, the dog color and all of that. I like this just because MJF knows how to play these mind games. And you know, CM Punk showed up at the beginning, say Ferris. I don't know if it's the music at the band. I don't know. Or like just like Ferris Bueller. I don't know what it is. But it was cool. And then it's like, did you really mean all of that? So yeah, I did. So again, mind games, you know, more build up for Revolution. Yeah, and that's one thing. If, if you're just looking at this promo, you're like, what the heck? And babyface MJF. But you know, it was a little too long in the beginning. 
you know, he dragged it out. He's like, oh, I was picked on because I'm Jewish and all this other stuff. And I mean, again, they were really trying to hammer that sympathy card home. <clears throat> Excuse me, same on commentary. Even Shabani himself, you know, who Shabani always, oh, beat him up. He's a piece of shit and whatever. And commentators, a commentator swearing to me, it's extremely cringe, you know, GCW especially. It shows but, also that you don't have enough, like, vocabulary, you yeah, know, to be and, able to communicate. Yeah, and I mean, this, uh, even Shabani, you know, he felt bad for MJF. So they're really playing that up, that mind games. No, I think in that match, he's going to be full heel. You know, he's going to heal on Punk and it's going to be, you know, classic MJF. But here, you no, know, it was really the mind game, the switch. Like, well, you know, what do you think after watching it? Yeah. No, like, like I said, for me, it's good because it is mind games. It's like, hey, let's yeah. get him out of the focus because now I'm playing his head and, and it's not me. It's not him playing against me. It's now I'm the one like in control. So yeah. that's what I think is what they're trying to do. So like also like a pro by Garcia, same thing kind of, hey Daniel, you might be the greatest, blah, 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 but in the end, I'm the younger, I'm going to be better be than you, I'm going to beat you, all of that, cool stuff, I mean, the main event for me, absolutely worthless, up to like the last three, four minutes, that's all it was, tell me a little about a new incarnation of Penta, really cool, you know, like gory, like dark, even Alex had like the like, makeup, all the, all, they played it out really cool. He was on also in like, AAA on Saturday. He actually fought uh, for the tag titles and everything. He could he I, I think he won the match by like by DQ. That's why he didn't become the champion. Going against Malachi Black and also Brody. And you know, like the house of Malachi. I don't know what you felt about this match. But again, another debut that I, I feel that is unnecessary. At least just for me. Unnecessary. Yeah, I mean, it, again, it's it's super counterproductive. I mean, the entrance with Penta, Alex, all that stuff. I mean, really cool. Uh, I, I you know some people don't like him, but I like you know I like Pack a lot. I, I you know, and him and Penta aren't a bad team, you know, because I know it's not you know. I mean, Phoenix is great too. Hopefully, he comes back soon. But you know, this is the the match. It, it was all right. They showcased Brody King's power and everything, but. You know, the ending, Malachi Black went for the spit, you know, Penta covered it, is so Malachi Black kind of swallowed some of the own, you know, mist and everything, or most of it, and, you know, that caused it, then Penta got the roll-up, one, two, three, um, but, but that, you know, Malachi Black, what do we say, okay, you know, he lost to Cody Rhodes, but Cody Rhodes is gone, whatever, this new group, this tag team, they just need to keep winning, they just need to whatever, right, okay, well, you know, even if they don't win, they have a guy who can get pinned, that's not Malachi Black, right? It's Glory Malachi King. Black, yeah, no, Malachi Black is the one who gets pinned. So I don't know. I don't think Smack the SmackDown feud with Biggie. I don't think that would have been any worse than this. Yes, so, yes, I, I agree with maybe you. Maybe I would have stayed there. Then at least you could have been with your wife. But yes. it is what it is. And then after the match, Brody King heals on him for a little bit. The lights go out again. Even Jim Ross is like, "Okay, what the hell? Somebody paid the power bill." This is <laughs> an Undertaker, yeah. Yeah, and then no, you know, then we see, you know, Buddy Matthews or whatever his name is. Yeah, you know, not more is, Buddy Murphy, but Buddy Matthews, yeah. yes. Yeah, Buddy Matthews and, you know, Malachi Black, you know, he starts selling it here. And I was thinking, I knew he was going to join up with Malachi Black, but I'm thinking if he doesn't and he's babyface, Malachi Black is completely dead and buried. He might as well yes. have left with Cody because he was yes. selling it like he's seen the Grim Reaper himself. And then no... Boom, he starts healing on Penta, Malachi Black starts laughing, they beat up the baby faces. And we keep seeing these triple threat groups. You know, Marco Stunt, he was his contract wasn't renewed, but you know, Christian's right there, that's a triple group, you know, this, you know, the ass club or you know, the Billy Gunn club, <laughs> that's what it's called, you know, all them. Those triple threat and pack and the Lucha Bros, Death Triangle, those triple uh Thread are those you know three man tag titles might be introduced sooner rather than later? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, and so we'll see. I mean, like they added another member, they took out like Pack, they took out a Penta, Penta a little bit at least better than what Pack was. We'll see. I mean, Ray Phoenix is almost ready to come back because he wasn't that as injured as uh, or, you know, previously expected, so we'll see. It's going to be another trios match, but like you said, for me, Malachi Black started out really hard cody completely buried the guy and it's not going you know it's not going good for the guy i'm out to try like you said biggie would have been so much more interesting than this we mentioned this uh eddie kingston and jericho they have a phase up good promo like you said by both especially kingston you know jericho right being kind of like truthful about a lot of things but kingston is just the intensity and every single word is coming from the heart so I like this, you know, oh, I want to beat you, like, you know, like, you know, everybody thinks that I'm a loser, I do things my way, Jericho just saying, like, oh, you can beat me, how about let's do this a revolution, didn't we say this months ago, yeah, they're gonna do it, 
And, you know, he's just one of the best version of Jericho. Not the bullshit. Not like the guy with the mimosas. Not the guy that, like, MJ having the feud. Blood and guts. No, no, no. He wants the best version of Jericho. WCW. The guy, you know, that, like, was the first AEW champion. All of that. It's going to be a great match. I'm yeah, excited. Hopefully, you know, the, Eddie guy, the guy who your friend, you know, Paul Levesque, you know, used to hate. You yes. Know, that's the Chris Jericho I want. I mean, Eddie, Eddie Kingston is so good. I mean, this is one of those things, we, you know, what you covered is good enough because the people both watch this on YouTube. Eddie Kingston is so over. He's so good on the mic. And, and Jericho's like, you know what? Yeah, we're going to have this match because you can never win the big one. You're, yes. you know, you're, like you said, you're a loser. You might win all the garbage matches, you know, the ones people don't care about, people don't remember. But anytime a match actually matters, you can never win it. Here it is, big match at the pay per view. Anything can happen, but you know Jericho's going to put him over. To really, I, Kingston's time is now. You got to push this guy. You, you know, got to do it. it. Yeah, there's no other way. You know, I mean, he would even be a guy like. Remember when Eric Young became champion? I mean, completely different story. But like Eric, you know, oh my God, nobody thinks it's going to happen, and it happens, and it's like, oh, this is awesome. And, and they did that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it was good. Really, good idea. I'm saying Eddie Kingston could be champion for a week, you know, a day, you know, it don't no matter. I put the belt on him, recognize his talent. But this is good. This is a start. A great promo. Do Good justice for the guy. Just do justice for the guy. Do it for one night. I liked it. Like you said, we have a promo about Mike Hardy and Andrade because Andrade is going to be facing Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship at Rampage. I mean, already, it's already probably taking place right now. And he says, hey, you need any kind of help, bro? Well, you know, and he's a translator. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. A little one doesn't need anything. It's all good. I'm hoping that if it's going to be a title switch, you know, like you said, maybe Miro comes out after that, then we can actually finally have a better champion. If Andrade is complacent or like he's happy with just be the TNT champion, poor guy, he should be aspiring to be like the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Well, I don't no, know the book, you know, no the guy here. There's no way he can. How, yeah. Without Zelina Vega, he's nowhere near main event. And yeah, I don't know if Ryan Nature Boy is ever going to help him, but I don't know here. No, I'm probably no, just going to be, Flair, you know, Sammy's going to retain here. So yeah, Sammy's going to retain Flair. I don't think anybody's going to sign him. The stuff he says on his podcast and everything is, you know, yeah, you, you he's know, more than saving, saving, right? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to speculate nothing, but hey, he's getting older, a lot of bumps to the head. You don't know, you know, what that kind of does to people with the things they say. But I mean, no, I don't think they're going to bring him in. Especially with the heat he recently had, and Andrade, Zelina, I mean, Zelina's tied up, and you know, SmackDown or Raw, or yes. Raw, I think she is. You know, Raw, Raw, yeah, Raw yeah, tag team I mean, champion. Yeah, but this is just no. Yeah. Exactly. So no, it's not going to be a good one. And let's go to the next one. This is a qualifying match for the ladder match, the Revolution, and this is Ricky Stars, of course. He, he we knew, like this guy at least. Paul is great. He he has a lot of talent, but he's good enough just to be in those ladder matches. Let's compromise our neck. You know, we had concussions. We almost like had your neck broken. That's fine. And he goes against number ten for the Dark Order. Quick match. Spear one, two, three. Did you think otherwise? No. There you see Power Hubs right there, right next to him. Team Taz is still going strong. They have a little bit of stare that or something with Keith Lee. And to me already, Keith Lee really like two weeks and he hasn't had a match. You know, I don't I know. Mean, like, I, I, the I, first feud for him, I don't know. Yeah, and he isn't gonna have a match. You know, until you know the the ladder match at uh, Revolution, but I mean the match with Ten, it was good. I mean Ten's not a bad wrestler, but we knew Ricky Starks was going to win this. And the cool thing is now we have two members of Team Taz in this. But unfortunately, I don't think any of those the three guys, you know, you know, not counting Wardlow, the other three, I don't think any of them are going to win it because this is the feud. Keith Lee has an interview and, you know, he still talks the same like he always did. You know, he does. He, he's not any more fired up or anything. Still, oh, hello, Shivani. You know how he Yeah, like he's the same Keith Lee. He's like, he's the same Keith Lee from NXT. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I mean, that he was over with that in NXT, but I want him to be, hey, shouldn't he be excited? Now he's in a place where yes. he can, you know, whatever, be free. Or something, for example, remember what Jericho said in the podcast with Stone Cold? Change it up. People know who you are. Change yeah. it to actually, oh, well, look at this guy. Oh, he's doing something different. Maybe I want to pay attention. Yeah, but he, he doesn't get two words out, and Ricky starts, and then they interrupt him, and because Giovanni said, oh, the only person here who you have, uh, you know, who you ever wrestled before was Ricky Starks, and, you know, Starks is like, yeah, you know, we do have chemistry and all that stuff. So you see that they're planting the seeds here for the feud, and, you know, maybe Powerhouse Hobbs and Keith Lee would be a great match. But, that would be a great but, match. But listen, why, why do you want to give that away? That yeah. could be something you build that up, man. Don't you want to see these stupid guys? You don't go 
Stone Cold and Brock Lesnar away on TV. That's why Stone Cold left. Yeah. You don't put Stone Cold and The Rock away. No, you did that for WrestleMania. The dream matches, like you always say, what do you do with dream matches? We build. We give them a long time. I feel like we they're get... just going to give you Powerhouse Hobbs and Keith Lee right away and everybody's going to... And Rampage. In Rampage, you know, yeah. something that you don't even like, you don't even care to watch. Like you said, it's like the booking like, of American, you know, pro companies, wrestling companies. And it's not that great because you feel desperate. You don't like to build anticipation. You don't like to like do long term booking. Yeah, you just want to like have it out. Two weeks. The only the only thing that has been long booking for the for a while that's been pretty good is CM Punk and MJF. And so yeah, and also I will yeah. say Serena D. If kick out Rashid a little bit, you know, maybe when she comes back, also it will be something better. But like you said, uh, that uh, those two are the only ones. Because even Adam Hamlin Page and Adam Cole, you know, like a week up, like what, like Alan Archer was like the number one contender no, no, like a few weeks. Been, that's only been three weeks. Yeah, three nine, weeks. nine or two weeks. Yeah, exactly. So it's not, it's not that great. I don't know what they're gonna do here, but like, let's talk about something really quick because, of course, like the TBS championship was defended. The bunny, this, this girl, hear me out here. This girl is very good in the ring. But unfortunately, again, the way they book her, and also the way that like the the character is not good at all. Because this match that she had with like Jade was actually not bad. There was a lot of like you know, Matt Hardy was right there. Also, my uh, Mark Squirrel, my Squirrel, I think is his name. He was also there for like Jade. They had this uh, situation that they gave the brass knuckles. They used the title. In the end, she was a uh, two super kicks. She was going to do her move, but then Jade, of course, she did like the glam slam. One, two, three. She asks who's next, and Tay Conti comes back, and like you said, she has a lot of heat for the Sami Guevara thing. You know, she has a lot of things, and, and, and rightfully so, hey, we're not going to judge, but like she knew what she was getting into, and they're going to have this match, probably a revolution, but I don't think it's going to be in the pay-per-view pool. I think this is going to be like probably a kickoff show. Yeah, I mean, they might have this on the show because it is a championship. TBS now is their you know new main home. You know, yes. TBS might be like, what the hell, why are we on the pre-show? But uh, no, I did this with the match with the bunny. It wasn't bad. Sterling and Matt Hardy going at it, getting involved in everything. Uh, and we also have note Matt Hardy kind of it was disgusted with uh, private party. So yes, I think they're hinting at him leaving private party and Jeff Hardy coming here as well. So yeah, you know, no more private party, but Jeff Hardy and you know, Hardy, 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 all the Hardy, Hardy, yes, yes, yes. I agree. Um, I agree. Jade, you know, no dominant win 28 no. She's like, I'm going to be 30 and 0, 50 and 0. Her and Ty Conti, I mean, it's going to be a, a pretty good match, but I don't, there's no way they put the belt on her. I think Jade's going to get the win, keep rolling. And, you know, Jade's getting better too in every match we see. She's no Serena Deeb, Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, anybody like that, but. You know, she's getting better with every match we see. And, you know, I, I don't mind it. That's what I mean. I keep the belt on her. I don't see any reason to take it off. Oh, no, especially to, like, give the title to, like, Tay. I don't think it will be a good a good decision at all. You know what I mean? I just, Jade is, like, is a good, is a good heel. And she's, like you said, every match, she keeps getting better and better. And I, I feel that, like, if... I, I don't know, but I just my my gut is just telling me it's gonna be in the kickoff show. We'll see what happens. And I, I think that like in the end, like a lot of heat on Tay. I mean, a lot of people love Tay, but like I don't know if she if she's worthy of that title over Ruby Soho, over even like Thunder Rose, over Hikaru Shida. I don't know if they will be legit for the title and also for like what it is at Tay Conti. But Paul is going like you know a few matches already. We mentioned what is going to happen on Rampage, what is going to happen on Revolution, and this is where we're going to see the trios match. See, this is poor booking for me. It is all oh, we don't have anything to do. Let's put these guys together. And this is kind of going to be the go home show, if I'm not mistaken. No, there's, there's two more weeks. So this is kind of like before the go home show, but I don't like this match. I don't care for it. Oh, no, that's the go home show because it's March 6th. So yeah, that's the go home show. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, then yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it's coming up. It is. Yeah, so, you know, that's why they said, you know, they, they had the match this week to decide the one team in the tag match. Then, they're you know, they're having the battle royal next week, and that's it. And, you know, you're going to see a lot of this stuff. And, you no, know, it's again, how can I really get excited for a lot of these feuds? You know, only maybe one or two of them on this card are, you know, long book feuds that you really want to see. Some of the matches might be dream matches and everything, but it's all, a lot of it's hot shot. A lot of it is really obvious booking, you know, with, with some stuff. So it's hard to get excited for it. But, you know, when it comes to March 6th, you know, I will be excited. I no, guess. yeah, there's going to be, and, you know, they added, we're going to talk about one more reason to be excited because in the end, main event, remember what we said, Garcia against Brandon Anderson, good match, you know, very technical. And, and this is the first year I heard that, like, uh, Brandon Anderson beat Sad Jr. from, um, 
Japan, from New Japan Pro Wrestling, at being the best technical wrestler in the world, and rightfully so. Daniel, Brian Danielson, the American Dragon, is having a great, great run right now in AEW because he's enjoying himself. And he's being booked probably the most likely the way that he wanted to be booked in WWE. And, you know, Stomps showing Garcia dominance. Hey, in the end, he gains with a KO. And this is not the one thing that matters because we knew that like he was gonna win, but then the members of 2.0 they start like going at Danielson, and then who shows up? John Moxley, of course. I mean, they cannot have a show without John Moxley, but this one at least makes sense. Why all? Because he said, "Oh, you want to be in the tag team, but before you wanted a match." Well, it's I think it's gonna be first blood if I'm not mistaken, because he said something about the bleed. So he said, no, "Well, no, I think they're just gonna have." I mean, I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure he said, oh, you know, you don't, you won't fight with somebody until you bleed with them. He's like, well, yes. then, you know, we're going to bleed. You know, or he's like, I don't need this chair to make you bleed. So I think they're just going to have a match where they get busted. I mean, look at his two matches with Hangman. They got busted. Over, they were bleeding yes. all over. There was nothing. I mean, the first blood stipulation, I mean, hey, no offense, whatever, if you like it. But to me, it was always stupid. It was always a bullshit stipulation. How can you control it if somebody accidentally gets busted open? Yeah. So it's a, it's a stupid gimmick uh, stipulation. But this is a match to look forward to because, I mean, the match here that we saw in the main event was great. Daniel Garcia, I think, is a guy who you, you keep booking him and you keep, you know, doing what you're doing with him. He could be in the Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara spot in, you know, a year and a half, two years from now. But he's really talented, really good. And he, we're already seeing him in the main events of shows. But, you know, uh, Danielson took him to a fantastic match. And I think he can do the same with Moxley. So at the pay-per-view, it's going to be good. Uh, the only thing that scares me is Mo the whole thing is Moxley never beat him, but Moxley's a new guy, and I mean, I hope that story continues. I hope Moxley doesn't beat him, because if that's the case, then Danielson's soon going to be the guy who can't win the big one. Yes, no, he, uh, yeah, gonna, I, I feel that, like, in this case, John Moxley just needs to lose. He couldn't beat Omega, you know, tied yeah. to Omega, he tied Hangman, he lost to Hangman, you know, and it's like... Danielson's now the guy who can't win the big one. Yes, no, and especially when, like, he says, oh, I'm this, you know, the best wrestler, technical wrestler, I'm the best wrestler here, all of that. He needs to get that win because John Moxley doesn't really have anything going for the guy. Right now, he's a little lost because he just came back. So a loss wouldn't be bad. You know, hey, like, get a little humble, and then we regroup. After that, you go back down, then we go back up, I feel. But this is good and great closing of the show because remember, something that we always mention on Dynamite is just like the closing of the show is always in like awful, not too great. And also we didn't see Sting, that was great. We didn't see Darby Allen, that was even greater. You know, we just a promo by Britt Baker and also Thunder Rosa that are going to have the match at or oh, what is going to be Revolution and Thunder Rosa said it's going to be this time, it's going to be a uh, sanction. You know, it's going to count. So that's cool. So Paul, you know, you're closing thoughts before we go. Yeah, you know, a pretty good week. I think next week we're going to see some of those other players we didn't see this week. Um, you know, they're hyping up the pay-per-view, doing a pretty good job. And the same thing I said in the beginning. Uh, a lot of the matches, you know, and the stuff we saw here tonight was good. And some of it, not so much. The only thing I would have did if I couldn't delete our ad and I could only move around. Again, you're, you're, you know, your champion should always kind of be in the main event. You should yes. always want to see your champion. He shouldn't be given to you at the open of the show. You know, so to me, that that's just bad placement, bad booking. For Only Roman players. Reigns can pull that off. I'll say that. Yeah. I'll say that. Yeah, exactly. So, family, thank you so very much to every single one of you for checking us out. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications and keep sharing the word. You know, keep sharing the link. Keep sharing the videos. So everybody is just more exposed to the original rubric. And where else can they find us, Paul? And guys, you follow us on all of our social media, Rope Break on Facebook, OG Rope Break on Twitter, Original Rope Break on Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok, and of course, right here on YouTube, the home of the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the Original Rope Break. And you and me have one more thing that is left to say, and that is... Uh, 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 uh,